Calimera. Welcome to Athens. The historical capital of Europe and the birthplace of democracy, art, science and philosophy of Western civilization. It is September 2021. I've been in Greece so many times before, but I always just visited the seaside. Finally, the time has come to explore its capital. So excited to be here. Are you ready to join me for a tour? Let's start, my dear friends. The first place I'm taking you with me is the ancient theater of Dionysus. The theater of Dionysus is known as the first sample of Greek theaters and the birthplace of the Greek drama. It is also the first theater in the world. This ancient theater was dedicated to god Dionysus, the god of wine who also happened to be my favorite Greek god. Dionysus festivals were the main force behind the development of Greek theatre. During the 5th century, the theatre was used as a regular performance site of the plays written by the great famous Greek tragic poets such as Euripides, Sophocles and others. The theater was a place to honor God Dionysus and the plays were performed as part of his celebrations. There are a few stories how the theater was built. It seems that the biggest part of the theater was originally made of wood, but it was later rebuilt in stone. In 330 BC, the stone seats could host up to 17,000 people. When I close my eyes, I can almost hear the people's excitement from back then while they enjoyed the performance and dived deep into the plays of Euripides and others. Now, we're going to visit the place that we all learned about in the school. The greatest and finest sanctuary of ancient Athens, dedicated to the goddess Athena, the one and only Acropolis of Athens. The Acropolis of Athens is the most striking ancient Greek monumental complex, situated on a hill from where you can admire the whole city. Strong fortification walls have surrounded the Acropolis for more than 3,300 years. The first fortification wall was built far ago during the 13th century BC. The sanctuary reached its peak in the 5th century BC, when under the ruling of Great Pericles, a large number of monuments were developed, including the Parthenon, the Erechtheion, the Propylaia, and the Temple of Athena Nike. Here in Athens were born democracy, philosophy, theater, freedom of expression and speech, which they all provide to this day the intellectual and spiritual foundation for the contemporary world. The Acropolis monuments survived for almost 25 centuries through wars, explosions, bombardments, fires, earthquakes, and so much more. Walking here felt like traveling back in time. And being a small part of it for a short period was a truly special experience. The best time to visit Acropolis 
is at the end of a day. When there are last visitors. And the place looks just magical with the golden sunset light. There is even a small balcony viewpoint from where you can get the most beautiful look over the whole site. Seeing the sun rays coming out between the columns made me feel very peaceful and grateful to be here. And when you're done with the visit, don't forget to climb the small hill next to the Acropolis site, from where you can enjoy the whole view of Athens and of a sanctuary with its evening lights. In the evening, the streets of Athens get full with locals and tourists. Everyone is just walking around, enjoying a bit lower night summer temperatures, buying souvenirs, eating at tavernas, listening to local musicians, eating souvlaki, osaka, tzatziki, fish, Greek salad with feta cheese and many other tasty Greek meals. Of course it's a must trying out some sweets while drinking Greek coffee or something stronger like ouzo for example. Simply enjoying the Athens evening atmosphere. Second day in Athens. What I really love to do a lot when visiting new places is making photos or videos from random streets, balconies, local shops, anything I see on the way. Just walking and exploring the local vibes till I reach the next sightseeing point. I take a local transport only if I'm really tired or if there is no other way to get to the next point. Otherwise, I just walk. And walk. And walk. It's the best way to learn how to get around without checking the Google Maps all the time. The first stop was ancient Greek Agora. Agora is located beneath the northwest slopes of the Acropolis. In ancient Greek cities, Agora was an open space that served as a meeting ground for various activities of the citizens. The place where political gatherings and juries would take place. The name Agora was first found in the works of Homer. Today, Agora represents a large area with ancient ruins and much greenery. Among the most important monuments of the ancient Agora is the temple of Hephaestus, which is one of the best preserved ancient temples in Greece. The 
second monument is called Stoa of Atalus. Stoa was recently renovated and it was actually a trade market constructed by the king of Pergamus between 159 and 138 BC. Today, it is an important museum in Athens and houses many interesting exhibits found during excavations in the ancient Agora. Okay, I think it's time for some coffee break. But before that, I had to visit one more place nearby, called Hadrian's Gate. The Arch of Hadrian is a triumphal arch, which lies very close to Acropolis, walking distance from famous Syntagma Square. It was built far ago, around 130 BC, and is made of fine pentelic marble, with a height of 18 meters and 12.5 meters wide. Very busy street here. Okay, let's walk and find some nice coffee place. The streets of Athens outside the city center, as well as the buildings, remind me a bit of my hometown, Belgrade. It almost feels like I'm back there. This is Omonoia Square. The streets around the Omonoia Square are rated in the internet as not so safe place to be because of the drug dealers, thieves and prostitution. But from my experience, even while passing here during the night to get to my hotel and witnessing some not so pleasant scenes, I still didn't feel like in danger as described in the internet. I felt the same safe or unsafe as in any other big city during the late hours. Anyway, I decided not to take Greek coffee this time, but to enjoy my favorite cappuccino. Hmm, so good to sit and relax. Let's continue with our tour. Next stop is Panathenaic Stadium. It was built around 330 BC, primarily for the Panathenaic Games. Stadium was rebuilt in marble by 144 AD and had a capacity of 50,000 seats. It is the only stadium in the world built entirely of marble. In 2004, it was used as the Olympic venue. It is also the finishing point of the annual Athens Running Marathon. After a bit more of walking, the streets lead to the Syntagma Square. The square is located in front of the 19th century old royal palace that is since 1934 used as the seat of the Greek parliament. Syntagma Square is the most important square of modern Athens from both a historical and social point of view, where all the important events take place, like political activities and similar. After Syntagma Square, it was time for guard change in front of the parliament. I always enjoyed this kind of ceremonies and I really liked the Greek uniforms. Okay, it's starting. By the way, the guard change takes around 10 minutes. 
so I speed it up the video a bit. Really nice, isn't it? I always admired how much work, patience and discipline is needed to be that synchronized or to stand for hours without moving. Not easy task at all, I think. After checking out the shopping pedestrian area, where all the international famous brands are located, the time for sunset and the end of our Athens tour was approaching. And that means going up to the top of the hill of the city. The hill is called Lisabetus Hill and it's possible to get up to the top with a car or just by walking like I did. It is a beautiful path up with cactuses on one side and the opening view of Athens on the other side. If you watched my other videos, you probably noticed that at home I have a lot of cactuses in my atelier. I'm a big cactus fan. When you reach the top of the hill, there is a cute little white chapel standing there. The sunset view over the city is just incredible. One of the most beautiful ones I ever saw. perfect way to end the day in Athens. Thank you, my friends, for taking a walk with me and exploring this wonderful city together. I enjoyed sharing this unforgettable experience with you. And thank you, Greece, for being such a lovely host. Sas Evharisto.